Hello friends, welcome to this session on number system and in the last uh, session I promised you that I will be telling you a trick on how to find out whether a particular fraction's uh, decimal representation will be terminating or not. So here is the trick. The trick is and it's very easy to uh, see also you can do a little bit of mathematical manipulation and you'll be able to uh, derive it yourself. So the thing is fractions with denominators of the form 2 to the power m and 5 to the power n will always have terminating decimal representation. And what are m and n? m and n are non-negative integers. What are non-negative integers folks? Non-negative means something which is not negative. So something which is not negative is 0, 1, 2 and any number, uh, any positive number, right? So let us understand this first. So uh, let us take an example of uh, to to kind of you know explain this. So let us say we have twenty one upon two hundred. Okay, twenty one upon two hundred. Okay, so let us try to find out uh, its decimal representation. So its decimal representation, if you see. Uh, if you divide 21 by 2 is 10.5, so it is nothing but 0 0.1155. Um, I'm sorry, my bad. So the representation is uh, 21 by, it is 105, sorry. So 105, if you divide uh, 21 by 2, it is 10.5 and there are two zeros, so it will be simply 100, uh, 10.5 by 100, so which is equal to 0 0.1. Zero five. I hope uh, you know I'm not making a mistake. Otherwise, you know how to uh, divide twenty one by two hundred and find the. So in any case, you will see that uh, you know the this is what is observation. This is terminating, terminating decimal representation, isn't it? Terminating decimal, isn't it? Now, let's take another example. So another example could be let's say seven upon twenty five. Okay, so 7 upon 25, let us do the long division, 25 and then 7, so 0, then you take decimal and then become 70, so 25 2 times is 50, isn't it? So remainder is 20 and then again 1 0 comes, so hence 28, okay, so 25 times 8 is 200, so hence this goes and hence I get what, 7 upon 25 is 0 0.28. Right, let us take one more, a uh, simpler one maybe, 3 by, let us say, 3 upon um, 80, okay, so what is it, so let us first find out 8 by, th uh, 3 by 8, so hence let me do this, so, or you can take directly 80, so this is 3, so you put 0 point and then becomes 0, but it is not sufficient, again put a 0, so it becomes 300, now, 83, times three times if you do you'll get 240 okay so what is the remainder here remainder is 60 put another zero so what next right eight seven is a 56 so 80 80 times 7 is 5 60 okay so what is left 40 right put a zero now five times 400 wow again what do i see i see that 3 by 80 again we got a terminating terminating decimal representation so what is the observation if you look closely 200 can be written as 2 into 100 or 4 in or uh, 8 into 25 isn't it so it is simply 2 to the power 3 into 5 squared okay what is here 25 so 25 if you see denominator 25 can be written as 2 to the power 0 which is 1 to the time to times 5 squared right similarly 80 is 16 times 5 which is nothing but 2 to the power 4 into 5 to the power 1 so all these uh, denominators if you see can be reduced to what form 2 to the power m and to n 5 to the power n so if you see here it is m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 in this case m is equal to 0 and n equals to 2 and here it is m equals to 4 and n equals 1 guys okay so this is a very important observation right and why is it happening let us now see why it is happening or for that matter before uh, we go to uh, the proof part of it let us take some other example where only 2 and 5 are not there 
so for example let us say we do uh, 7 upon 15 okay what is 7 upon 15 so 7 upon 15 if you see 7 upon 3 into 5 right it is not of the form of so 15 is not equal to 2 to the power m and 5 to the power n any mn for any mn it is not true so you can say sir uh, 2 to the power 0 into 5 but then you also have a 3 which is extra so hence we don't require 3 hence this is not satisfying our criteria so let us see whether we really get a terminating decimal or not so 15 and this is 7 so 0 and then a decimal gives you 70 then 15 times 4 is 60 so this is 10 then you another put another 0 so 15 times 6 is 90 and then you put you get 10 you get another 0 so 6 again so 90 and then you now know it is going to repeat isn't it so hence i can see it is non terminating so 7 upon 15 is 0 0.46666 and so on and so forth which is equal to 0 0.46 bar in our uh, methodology isn't it so clearly it satisfies the rule which we just you know we were discussing so far now let us see how and why it is happening now let us say we have a fraction p upon q okay general fraction where q where q is equal to 2 to the power m and 5 to the power n okay now let us take case 1 case 1 case wise why because let us say m is equal to n because there could be three possibilities what all m could be more than n m could be equal to n or m could be less than n for any two integers m and n isn't it so let us first take case where m is equal to n in that case what will this be q will be 2 to the power m into 5 to the power m now don't get confused when i use this point this point represents multiplication as well okay so now if you know the rules of indices it is nothing but 2 times 5 it's not into so let me write cross only so 2 into 5 to the power m which is nothing but 10 to the power m right now guys if you divide any number p by 10 to the power m that means one followed by some zeros you know that it will be a terminating decimal only you can just count the number of zeros from the left hand left hand side of p you can just count the no, those number of digits and put a decimal for example if 23 by 2 to the power 3 into 5 to the power 3 is there so what is this basically nothing but 23 upon 2 into 5 to the power 3 right which is 23 upon 1000 which is nothing but 0 0.023 which is a terminating decimal okay so case one was well understood now let us take case two case two is m is greater than n okay so if m is greater than n guys so i can find a small r such that m is equal to m is equal to n plus r we can say that right now if m is greater than n there can be a small r which when added to n will give you m isn't it now let us say p upon q is nothing but p upon 2 to the power m and q sorry 5 to the power 5 to the power n so what does this mean for example let us say if m was 5 and n is 3 so you can get r is equal to 2 right so hence 5 is equal to 3 plus 2 right now so hence p divided by 2 to the power m 5 to the power n which is now can be written as p divided by 2 to the power n plus r into 5 to the power n right now the same thing can be written as p 2 to the power n into 5 to the power n into 2 to the power r why because i know a to the power m plus sorry into a to the power n is equal to a to the power m plus n so the reverse of this i know now 2 to the power n plus r can be written as 2 to the power n into 2 to the power r 
okay so hence now what do i get from here so i get p upon again i can take the exponent to be common 2 into 5 to the power n into 2 to the power r isn't it so hence this is p divided by 10 to the power n into 2 to the power r correct now can i do a trick i am doing this trick what i am multiplying and dividing the denominator and numerator by 5 to the power r can i do that a fraction doesn't change if you multiply and divide or uh, if you multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number why do why did i do this i'll tell you a little while later so in this is p into 5 to the power r divided by 10 to the power n into 10 to the power r why because 2 to the power r into 5 to the power r can be written as 2 into 5 to the power r which is nothing but 10 to the power r so that's what i have written here that means this becomes 5 p into 5 to the power r divided by 10 to the power n plus r isn't it 10 to the power n plus r that is you are dividing a num number in the numerator by a power of 10 so hence again this will be a terminating terminating decimal isn't it terminating decimal representation likewise you can again see case 3 case 3 case 3 so what is case 3 when m is less than n now the same logic will happen so what will happen it will be now we can find out a small r which is equal to n so now what can we do we can express the same p by q can be written now as p upon q q is 2 to the power m and 5 to the power m plus r instead of n i am writing like that and the same mechanism can be done now instead of multiplying by power of uh, 5 here you have to multiply by power of 2 so if you see p divided by 2 to the power m into 5 to the power m into 5 to the power r which is equal to p upon 2 into 5 to the power m into 5 to the power r correct i am just repeating what i did above so you'll have to be a little patient and go to go through this video a little slowly you will be able to get this so 2 into 5 to the power m and now what i'm doing i am multiplying and dividing by 2 to the power r both numerator and the denominator right why did i do that so that i get powers of 10 in the denominator so it is 10 to the power m into 10 to the power r so hence it is p into 2 to the power r divided by 10 to the power m plus r you must be a little you know uh, aware of the indices and the laws of exponents then you then this becomes very easier proof but if you don't know that it at the time at this time so you can just be you know familiar with the trick and the trick is if it is of the form of 2 to the power 5 and uh, sorry 2 to the power r and 5 to the power or 2 to the power m and 5 to the power m then you know it is going to be terminating right so again you see here this is terminating terminating decimal why because it is being divided by a power of 10 so what is the learning from this the learning is simply this that if you have fractions with denominators of the form 2 to the power m and 5 to the power n then it will always have terminating decimal representation hope you understood the logic thank you